in the morning so today's video is going to be a little bit different uh, we did a job last thursday it was a view job up in the mountains and it turned out really nice but the the people the husband and the wife that worked with us said they wanted to help and you know that is so rare so rare to have a client say they want to work with us and you know they worked really hard i couldn't believe it it was a hillside they were dragging everything up the hill and then later on, um, the, uh, the the woman wanted to learn how to use a chainsaw, and she was, you know, she was very keen and she was paying attention, and uh, she had never used one before. So I said, "Well, you want to try using my electric saw? It's a little bit easier to handle." And there was a few small trees that needed to be cut down. They were only about, I don't know, 10, 12 inches, and they were all leaning. So I knew she couldn't really screw up, but it was interesting. Um, I, I gave her some advice. Jorge gave her some advice. Her husband, who was more skilled, he gave her some advice. And, and you could see her thinking it all the way through. And, and it made me stop and, and think, you know, what I take for granted, you know, all the years of using a chainsaw, I, I don't even think. It's just intuitive. I know what to do and how to do it and what's going to work. You know, I have to pay attention to what I'm doing, but it's, it's, just, a, it's just a process. But for her, well, I'll, I'll tell you what, let's go watch this newbie with a chainsaw for the first time in her life. You know, I gotta give her credit, she did pretty good. So I did a job for a couple of friends of mine and they own an electric chainsaw. Thanks, so guys. when I she said she wanted to learn food. how to use a chainsaw, I told her, why don't you use my yeah, small you Husqvarna there, electric yeah. chainsaw because that'll be something that she can relate to with their own saw. If they owned a gasoline saw, I probably would have said, here, let's, let's try a gas saw. Now, I don't normally like to have my clients use my equipment, but because they're friends and I felt they were really eager to learn. But it's also important that uh, they both work... Uh, and some of the the crews up in the mountains. Now that's important there. Look at her hair. Her hair was hanging down close to the chainsaw. She has it tied back, but I really want to talk about long hair and the hazards of rotating equipment, be it a hand drill, be it a chainsaw, be it anything that spins. I have had experiences in my life where... I either knew of people that had bad experiences or actually saw it. When I was in a woodshop class as a kid, there was a guy with long hair and he was working the drill press and it got caught up in the drill press and dragged his head into the machine and tore out a chunk of his scalp. I also have another client who told me a story where she was younger. She was riding in a gasoline-powered go-kart, and her long hair nope, got caught nope, up in nope, the sprocket nope, in nope. the back, and it actually ripped uh, ripped her scalp off, and they were able to put it back together. But, I mean, I, I cannot emphasize so what'd enough you do, what'd you do wrong? the potential of long hair and uh, how easy is that, it is, is that chainsaw to have that hair on? get caught up in the machinery. you see how the lights still on? You know, when you I was young, I had there. long hair, lights too, and I started the business... And I was about 19 years old, and my long hair got caught up in my taut line hitch. And I had a hell of a time getting it unjammed so I could get back down out of the tree. Uh, I cut my hair shortly after that. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't have anything against long hair. But it is something to be wary of. So we've been uh, talking a lot here. I cut that top notch there and showed her what to do, and she started another one, got it wrong, and she cut this back notch. Okay, what's happening? It took her a while to do it. She did a lot of thinking about what she was doing. This is the very first tree she's ever cut a down. Bit more. 
you doing? And Make actually, sure this is the very first time she's ever used a chainsaw. <laughs> oh, there it goes. So just the fact that you know she was eager to learn, I, I felt that she needed some good advice. But I, it was my first. So victory. we can see what's wrong there. Okay, what no, happened? Terribly poor technique. <laughs> You know, she recognized it. She had, uh, there was a four or five small trees that they wanted to get rid of. And uh, so we said, well, you know, great place to learn. <laughs> I'm not quite sure why she did that one so high that it didn't really matter. Maybe it was easier for her to see her wedge. Sometimes I see an engineer's mind overthink the problem. And from my perspective, you know, I know what I'm going to do. I get in there. I do it. I don't hesitate. Um, I don't rush. You know, I, I pay attention to what I'm doing. I slow down when I need to slow down. But if you fully understand the whole process... Don't ever touch the bar. And you can make don't your front wedge bar. correct when from the active, first the bar. moments, you know, right, right at the... Uh, the initial um, meeting of the two points, then you know you're doing well. Then, then the back cut, um, that's one that you have to pay a little bit more attention to and, and slow down and make sure you don't overcut, which is what she was doing on her, her cuts. Her back cut, she was bending the, okay. the chain, uh, the chainsaw bar in too far on one side, and uh, that was not leaving an even hinge. The hinge for it to work has got to be consistent all the way across, and so it bends over evenly. These are small trees. They're leaning trees. You know, she, you know, she could have made a horrible cut, and it still would have fallen in the right direction. But I told her, I said, if you're going to be getting on these work crews and you have to cut down larger trees, you know, use this as a learning process so that when you do get into a situation, you'll better understand what you need to do and, and why it works. Now, I appreciate the fact that she really wanted to learn what, she was, what was going on there. So I, you know, I did take a little bit of time to slow down and, and talk to them. This, you know, I didn't waste a lot of time. But, you know, I, I think we've worked on this for probably... 15 or 20 minutes to cut these four trees down. Jorge was a big help too. He, he jumped in there and gave her a lot of advice. I wanted to talk a little bit about electric chainsaws. I, uh, there's her wedge cut. She did pretty good on that one. You can see she didn't overcut in the back. But I wanted to talk about electric chainsaws. I always seem to leave hope, that too that. much there. That's not so good. Yep. That's where she so screwed up. So it should have up. come in over here. Electric chainsaws there. can get you into trouble. I think uh, because they are so easy on and off, I think that the potential for an accident with an electric chainsaw is greater because it's too easy to run. When you start a gasoline chainsaw, you've got this vibrating motion thing that's loud and noisy, and it, it makes you kind of stop and and think about what you're doing more. But with an electric chainsaw, I, I think it's, you know, you're swinging this thing around and it's like a, like a loaded gun, you know, if you don't turn the switch off. Um, and, and I think that it's, I don't know, you tell me what you think about the differences. Uh, do you think electric chainsaws are more hazardous or potentially more hazardous? Now she's, uh, she's really making some big mistakes here. She didn't recognize it, but the slightest little pressure down was causing that bar to bend. And that was screwing everything up for her. She was having a really hard time getting these cuts to go because she wasn't letting the, the bar do the work without pressuring it. So you can see she's kind of trying to force it. And you can, it, it was kind of hard to watch her do this. And I, I did jump in. At one point, I said, okay, everybody be quiet. Don't say a word. Let her make all of her own mistakes. But 
I saw a few mistakes that reached the point where I thought they were getting a little bit dangerous, <laughs> so I stopped her. Working with the top of the bar, the tip of the bar, is potential for nope, kickback. Nope. Do it the other way. And that's where people can get into trouble. So she saw us doing it earlier, and I think that I should have probably talked with her a little bit more about it. Don't use the bar to pry. Don't don't use the bar to pry. Oh, I'm not trying to pry. I was just trying to get it out. Okay. What you're doing is you're pushing down on the chainsaw. Lift up on the chainsaw and it'll come right out. Lift up on it. Nope, don't touch anything. Nope, nope, nope. Go back to where you were. I'm gonna try, can I try just no, to get, nope. No, because what you've got right now. Okay. I had to jump in there and talk to her about it there. I, I couldn't um, keep my mouth shut. <laughs> After all, it was my chainsaw. <laughs> she figured it out. And, you know, at the end of the day, I think she did, you know, pretty good for a first time. Uh, just understanding the concept of, of cutting the wedge. That one wasn't quite right. You know, she didn't quite finish it off. But like I said, it's... Uh, you know, if she'd have made a horrible wedge and done everything wrong and come in from the back side and made the cut the way the tree was leaning, it would have gone down. And there it goes. That's the last of the okay, trees. Okay, I know that was kind of long and drawn out. But there was a lot of valuable stuff in there. You know, if, if you're a newbie or you don't have any experience or much experience with a chainsaw, you can learn from the mistakes of somebody else that's, that's running a chainsaw, or you can learn from somebody who's very experienced. But unless you see the mistakes, you don't really understand them. So, you know, the narrative that I was adding to this video hopefully was helpful, and but you have to spot all the little things that can get you into trouble or maybe makes the using of the saw not very efficient. <laughs> anyway, if you appreciate this video, um, hopefully uh, you'll, you're a subscriber, or if you're not, please do subscribe. Uh, you know, hit that little like button that helps out in those YouTube algorithms. And, you know, and tell a friend, you know, I mean, there's a lot of people in the world that want to learn more about trees and tree work, but also using some of the equipment. So, hey, I really appreciate all you guys that support me. Thank you.